Hey friends, I'm Jeffy G, welcome back. I'm doing a bit of a video here on how to use logic when you're dealing with cover materials. There's a lot of features and tools that we didn't have available to us 10 or 15 years ago. But if you're looking to make a remake of a cover song or learn a difficult guitar solo, here are some of the techniques that are gonna make it easier. A lot of cover songs don't have a consistent tempo. If you go back into the 70s, 80s, 60s, even before that, a lot of drummers did not play to a click track. So the tempo of the cover song varies. Why does this matter? Well, if you're gonna make a remake, it's easier if you get a consistent tempo. It's much easier if the metronome synchronizes. That way you can add barkers and any new parts that you add, be it MIDI or just playing, are gonna fit in the right time and tempo. I have a new project I've just opened in Logic. It defaults to 120 beats per minute. There's nothing in it. I created one audio track by default, but I'm not gonna use it. What I'm gonna do is drag the MP3 file in of a song, and I'm gonna use Reeling in the Years by Steely Dan. Came out in 1972. Pretty sure that when this came out, they did not use click tracks. And what I should get is a stereo track. Let's just expand that a little bit. And it's not gonna be in sync with the 120 beats per minute. It's gonna have various tempos. Don't really need that first track, so I'm gonna delete that. And I might be inclined to zoom in and try and line up par one, beat one. What I can see here is that right at about that two is where I want the downbeat of this song to be. And I think the file's too big, so I, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to cut the file or just trim it, just some housekeeping here. Don't really need this bit at the beginning. This to fall right on the bar line for two. And if I click on the metronome, you'll see that it isn't in sync. It's out of time with the metronome built into Logic. It's close, but a little bit behind because it's currently set to 120 beats per minute, but we don't really know the tempo of this song. Now, if you look it up on Wikipedia, you'll find it says that the song was recorded at 126 beats per minute, but I happen to know that that's not quite accurate. So the next step is to open up the smart tempo window. Here it is. I just double clicked on that region. I'm clicking on smart tempo. And I'm gonna to choose to analyze, which is gonna essentially break down and analyze everything in that MP3 file to determine what the tempos are. Okay, and now that it's done, I'm going to choose edit. And I'm gonna apply the region tempos. Those are the various tempos for this MP3 file to the entire project. And if I take a look at all the dots, you'll see that there are many tempos throughout the project now. We've got everything from 127 beats per minute up to about 133.8. And that's not what we want. We want a consistent tempo for the entire song. So the first thing we're going to do is change keep tempo to adapt. And then we're gonna turn on the flex capability, flex time. I'm gonna put that on just over to the left. And then we're gonna open up the event editor and we're gonna click on the tempo header. And these are all the tempos that you see represented here as dots, but we don't want these. We're gonna select all of them. So I'm choosing command A and delete them all. And we're gonna use one consistent tempo and I'm gonna use 128 beats per minute. And when I do that, you can see that now, instead of having all these dots here in the tempo window, I just have one line and it's set to 128 beats per minute. And if I play the song, the metronome for Logic is in sync with the song. And even though the tempo of this song varies up and down throughout the duration of the song, it's now sliced up all the little bits of that song so that it has a consistent tempo from beginning to end. And that's what we want. One of the great features in Logic is when you have this set to adapt tempo up here in the LCD display, or as it's referred to, is that you can actually move that tempo line and it will adjust not just the tempo of the song from a MIDI perspective, but it'll adjust the audio as well. So I slow this down to 119 beats per minute and I go back. Ah! 
you can hear that the song is quite a bit slower. So if you were trying to learn the guitar solo or trying to learn the piano part and slowing it down makes it easier for you to do, this is a great way to do it. I mean, you could create your own tempo map here potentially. And um, I'll just show you what that would look like if I, if I add uh, some tempo items in here. I can drag just the intro down to say 107. At this point, we're gonna do two things. First, we're gonna save our project. And we're also gonna bounce the file because it has a consistent tempo. We don't wanna confuse the original song, which has variable tempos, with the one that we've just fixed. I'm gonna bounce the project. Those distances look correct. I'm gonna bounce it as an MP3. And I'm gonna show you why later. There are a variety of AI tools that will isolate and separate the tracks. So if you've got an MP3 of the song, you can try one of these to split up the drums, the vocals, and the other parts of the song. It's gonna make it easier for you to work with. Now, one of the other programs that I like to use when I'm working on a cover is an AI program called Moises. And you can sign up for this for free. It essentially is a program or a tool for isolating and separating tracks. I'm gonna click on new, and it's gonna let me load a new file. And this is why I bounced that MP3 earlier. I drag the file into Moises, I click on next, and I have some choices I can make. Now I have the free subscription, but you can use the paid subscription to get slightly better quality and more separation of the tracks. I'm just gonna go with the default, which gives me vocals, drums, bass, and other. Once I've uploaded the file, it goes through some processing that it does server side and shows you the results in this window. Moises is available on iOS devices, and this is the browser-based version of it. So for free, you have a limited number of songs that you can drag in and go through this isolation process. And if you exceed that, you have to buy a subscription. It's a set number each month. So here we are, we've got our four tracks. But I'll give you an example of how you can isolate the individual parts. So here's just the vocals. Your everlasting sermon, you can see it fading fast. So you grab a piece of something that you think is gonna last. Or maybe you just wanna hear the bass part. And having these bits isolated is gonna make it easier for us to either reconstruct the song or even just learning the cover. So one of the last steps I'm gonna go through here is to export these files so I can pull them into Logic in the future. I click on Export All, and they're gonna appear in my downloads directory. I get a zip file, and here are my files. There's five of them, and you can see it's labeled them bass, drums, metronome, other vocals, and it has the key, D major, and the beats per minute. So let's go back into Logic and drag some of these in. Now, an important thing to remember is when you have this set to adapt tempo, any new content that you're adding into your Logic project is gonna affect the tempo, and we don't want that for this next little task. So we're gonna change that to keep, and we're gonna stay at this 128 beats per minute, but we're gonna pull in some of those isolated parts that I mentioned to you before. So let's say we're just interested in that bass part. I can drag the bass part into my Logic project, and I can solo just that one part. It's in sync with the entire song above. So if I take off solo. And I can slow down or change or just analyze the bass part on its own. And that can give the bass player a little bit more definition on what the bass is actually doing. Let's try that with one more track. Let's in other. I don't know what other is, but let's find out. Sounds like other is a combination of the guitar and the keyboard. It's only as good really as Moises was able to differentiate. And that 
that could be helpful. It would be nice if the piano and the guitar were on two separate tracks, but for free, we'll work with what we get. My head goes over here. My head goes over here. Another feature that you might want to make use of is Logic's ability to convert audio to MIDI. It could help in a couple of different ways. If you were doing a remake of a cover tune, having the MIDI data will let you pick and choose the sounds that you want to use. Whereas right now, if we listen to just the bass track, it's not great quality. It is in sync with the right tempo and everything. The route to getting this to work is to turn on the flex capabilities. And in that edit window, make sure that it's turned on. It'll do its analysis. And the setting that you want is flex pitch, because what's gonna happen here is it's gonna convert that audio to pitch data. And then we're gonna convert the pitch data to MIDI. So once you've gone through that analysis, down here on the edit, you can create a MIDI track from the flex data. And this is the relatively new feature built into Logic. Now, in my case, it opens up Scalar because it's looking for an instrument that we can assign that to. So since it's bass and we'll pick a bass sound, we'll just go with, say, the fretless bass. And here's your MIDI data. It looks a little overwhelming, um, but that's partly because it's all crunched together. Uh, we're not hearing anything. Well, guess why? All the velocities are set to zero. So with everything selected, I'm just going to increase the velocity. One of the missing features is that Logic doesn't interpret the velocities from the audio file. It's basically converting the audio file to pitch information and then pitch information to MIDI. Oh, it's a bit low. It's an octave too low. So we're going to transpose this up an octave. So you can see it's, it's not perfect, but it is a shortcut for sure in creating the MIDI data that you might use either to learn the song or do a remake. One other option to consider is whether you can get a complete MIDI file for the song you're trying to redo or learn. In my case, years ago, I somehow accumulated about 10,000 pop songs as MIDI. They're all of varying quality. Some of them are terrible, some of them are useful. So I looked into my library and I have one called Real Year. If I drop that into Logic, I get this. I get MIDI files for all these different parts. And let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> it's typical that it uses uh, general MIDI instruments, which sound like crap, but you can modify them. And um, there could be some parts in there that you decide, okay, you know, here's the bass part as MIDI, and it's more accurate than the other one that I converted. It might be more accurate, but I think if you can find the MIDI file for a given cover song that you're working with, obviously it saves you a lot of time. You might be able to take the drum beats or the parts that are in there and cut and paste the MIDI into a new file, assign them to instruments that you like the sound of, and it might make a good starting point. There's a lot of cool tools that are built into Logic. You don't think about using them for cover songs or remakes because they're designed towards composition, songwriting, and recording. If you found this video helpful, click on the like button. Feel free to leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, and click on the notification bell. Thanks for watching.